Thank you, afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Cherry Field in Tucson, Arizona. Todd Garbison for Southwest Sports Network. It's play-by-play -play coverage in the 2014 Chris Moon Memorial Cherry Field Classic. It's a Friday afternoon in Tucson, and we bring you the championship game, and it features the Ralston Valley Mustangs and the St. Lawrence Vikings. And we're underway in the top of the first inning as Jacob Gallegos leads things off for the Mustangs from Ralston Valley High. And he's up there with a count of a ball and a strike. And now a swing and a miss. And it's one and two. Austin Valley out of Arvada, Colorado. And the St. Lawrence Vikings from Burbank, Illinois. As the pitch is fouled away, we stay one ball and two strikes. Now the wind, another 1-2 pitch. And that's low and away for a ball, and it's 2-2. Two and two. So Gallegos leads off, and St. Lawrence sends out big right-hander Mike Kornacker. And the next pitch is low, and it's 3-2. and two. Gallegos starts in center field for the Mustangs. Connor Roth will bat second and play shortstop. David Journey hits third. He's the catcher. Then the first baseman, Jacob Nip, is fourth. 3-2 pitch, and that's high ball four, and the Mustangs have a leadoff walk. And with Gallegos at first base, the batter, Connor Roth. Gets you through the rest of the order. Jordan Holloway bats fifth as the DH, and he bats for third baseman Peter Carlson. Mitch Robinson pitches at bat sixth. The number seven hitter for the Mustangs, the left fielder, John DeVore. Caleb Squire starts at second base and bats eighth, and Jake Griffith in right field hits ninth. Pitch to Roth is over for a strike. Pretty good lead for Gallegos over at first base. And the next pitch over the outside corner, a strike, and it's 0-2. Turner to throw to first. Runner gets back and the ball gets away. And that will send Gallegos to second base. So when Ira puts a runner in scoring position for the Mustangs in the first. Swing and a miss, and Roth is out on strikes. One away in the inning for David Journey. Defensively for the Vikings, Robert Gutierrez plays left field. Kevin White is in center, and Mike Miller is in right. The infield, Frank Greco at third. The shortstop, Brad Wood. Eighth all bat, uh, play second, rather. And the first baseman, Roger Wilson. T.J. Merrick catching Mike Kornacker. First pitch, a breaking ball over the outside corner, a strike. One on, one out, just underway, top of the first inning championship game of the Chris Moon Memorial Cherry Fuel Classic. And pitch near the outside corner, a strike, and it's 0-2. Check back to second base in the pinch. And it's a little bit low for a ball, one and two. Check the runner again in the one-two pitch. And that's at the knees for a calm third strike, and Cherney knew it. Looking for a different pitch or at least a different spot. Not able to pull the trigger, and it's back-to-back -back strikeouts after a walk start the game. And now Kornacker faces the first baseman, Jacob Nett. First pitch low for ball one. And that pitch.
Pitch bounced in there, but backhanded nicely. The throw goes to third and safe the call. So Gallegos hustling to try to get to second. Looked like, uh, you know, reading that down angle, he was going to make it clean, but it turned into a nice play on a backhand by Merrick as he was able to backhand that ball and then the throw down to third just late. So runner at third with two outs, 2-0 oh the count on the cleanup hitter Nip, Trying to do just that as he fouls a pitch out of play. And the 2-1 pitch fouled away. Two balls and two strikes. of the 2-2 and that's popped up right side of the infield that's playable and it's the first baseman that calls for it and makes the catch as Wilson puts it away and the Mustangs are turned away in the top of the first inning they get a lead off walk but leave the runner at third base and after having a play it's the Mustangs nothing and the Vikings coming up Brad Wood will lead things off for St. Lawrence in the bottom of the first inning and the first pitch bounced in, ball one. Mitch Robinson gets the start in the championship game for Ralston Valley as the next one is low, and it's 2-0. and So Wood, the shortstop, leads off Nate Thalban second. Mike Kornacker, the pitcher, is third. Mike Miller, the right fielder, is fourth. Pitch outside, 3-0. and The number five hitter in the Viking lineup is the catcher, T.J. Merrick. Then Roger Wilson bounced sixth. And then a bottom third of the order, Kevin White, Frank Rico, and Robert Gutierrez. The 3-0 pitch over four strike, and it's 3-1. and one. And the 3-1 pitch, and that's low ball four. Ralston Valley with a leadoff walk in the top of the first inning. They got the runner to third but couldn't get him in. We'll see what happens for the Vikings here in their half of the first inning as we get a quick conversation. David Journey, the catcher, out to talk to his pitcher, Mitch Robinson. The rest of the Mustang defense, Jacob Nip at first base, Caleb Squire at second, the shortstop, Connor Roth, and Peter Carlson's at third. An outfield of John DeVore, Jacob Gallegos, and Jake Griffith left to right. So here's Nate Thaw with a runner at first. And the pitch outside for ball one. The set, the 1 0 pitch. And a fly ball and a shallow left near the line. And that's caught. Sound number one. Now the batter is Mike Kornacker with one on and one out. Bottom of the first inning, no score in the championship game. Throw to first and the runner back. Cornacker high for a ball. Bright sunny afternoon here in Tucson. A little different than what we saw earlier in the week. As that ball is hit into right field, that's playable out there and caught for out number two. So Griffith puts away the fly ball, two outs in the inning for the right fielder Mike Miller. But again, you think back to Tuesday when this uh, tournament got started, pool play on Tuesday 
We had uh, bright sunshine early in the morning. Clouds came in and actually had a lightning delay, very short one on Tuesday afternoon, and then light rain at the 5 o'clock games uh, also on Tuesday going into the early evening. Miller going the other way. Squirts a ground ball to the left side. That's uh, thrown across the diamond by Carlson in time. And the inning is over. No runs, no hits. A leadoff walk. Runner left at first. And after one, there's no score. Jordan Holloway, the DH, begins the second inning for Ralston Valley. And he takes low and away for ball one. And the next pitch outside, 2-0. Cornacker to the wine and the 2-0 pitch. That's low for a ball, 3-0. And the wind and the 3-0 pitch. And that's ball four. So four straight out of the strike zone to begin the second inning. And Holloway is aboard at first base. And the batter, Mitch Robinson. Starting pitcher, Mitch Robinson. Easy throw to first and the runner back. Now the bunch shown, the ball uh, thrown wide and it pops out of the glove of the catcher, Merrick, and Holloway goes to second base. So that works out well for the Mustangs there. They don't have to give up the out to get the runner to second base. That should go as a pass ball against the Vikings. And the next pitch is low for a ball, and it's 2-0. Two-0 pitch. And a ground ball on the right side. That'll move the runner ahead, and it gets passed into the outfield. Runner's going to come around third base and score, and the Mustangs are on the board. An RBI single off the bat of Mitch Robinson as he helps himself. All dove for it, but couldn't corral it. It got into the outfield, and not allowed that allowed Holloway to get around third base and in. So one nothing Mustangs top of the second inning and now the batter is John DeVore. The runner first and the runner back. Top of the second inning, championship game in the Chris Moon Memorial Cherry Field Classic from Tucson. Up on shown and the pitch outside for a ball. over for a strike. Again, DeVore had shortened a bunt. I don't know if that was really his intention there or not. Now the set of the 1-1. No bunt shown there. The pitch bounced in for a ball, 2-1. A run for the Mustangs as they hit in the top of the second inning and lead 1-0. Runner from first goes. The 2-1 pitch over for a strike and no throw.
Two balls, two strikes. Kornacker with the set as he looks back to second in the pitch. And that's fouled off of the plate. Check back to second base and the 2 2. And a swing and a miss. DeVore strikes out for the first down of the Mustangs, second inning. And the batter is Caleb Squire. And the first one over. Four strike, one on, one out, one in for Ralston Valley in the second. Pitch low, the throw to second base, the runner back. Swinging a foul ball. And the count one and two. And then we'll get a courtesy runner as Dalton Pribble will run at second base. Misses outside, two balls and two strikes. The set and the look back to second base, the 2 2. And yeah. a swing and a miss. The Squire strikes out, and there's two away in the inning. Now Jake Griffith, the Ralston Valley right fielder. And first pitch, a ball. The 1-0 pitch. And that's fouled out of play. It's 1-1. One one. Sent from Kornacker in the 1-1. And yeah, that's bounced foul on the first base side. It's 1-2. and two. Mustangs lead 1-0, hitting in the top of the second. And a ground ball over towards second. The ball has it on to first base. And that's in time to end the inning. But Ralston Valley is on the board first to lead off what comes around to score. They do it on just the one base hit. The pass ball helped. And they leave one on base after an inning and a half. one nothing, Ralston Valley. T.J. Merrick. Going after the first pitch and sends that one right back up the middle and into center field. A leadoff hit for the Vikings. Roger Wilson, Kevin White follow for St. Lawrence in the second inning. 
Anthony Chimera runs at first base as a courtesy runner. And we'll see what St. Lawrence chooses to do here. Down a run in the bottom of the second inning with a leadoff hitter aboard. Throw goes to first, and that uh, smothered over there by Nip. First pitch to Wilson outside for a ball. No sign of a bunt there, at least on the first pitch. Vikings down 1 0, batting in the bottom of the second inning. Turn and a throw to first. A little closer this time, but again, the runner back. Ball hit uh, pretty well out to right field, but that'll stay up there. And it's caught by Griffith for the first out. Now the batter, Kevin White. First and again close over there, but Chimera gets back. And pitch over the outside corner, a strike to Kevin White, the center fielder for St. Lawrence. Runner goes, swing and a miss, throw down to second base, and that's uh, way in time there as the uh, shortstop Roth, or maybe it was uh, Squire, but uh, the middle infielder just was waiting for Chimera to slide into the tag. Why trying to help it out by swinging through the strike zone to slow down the catcher journey, but uh, to no avail is the Next pitch is a breaking ball on its low, maybe outside, and it's one and two. So now two outs to the base is empty. Bottom of the second inning, the Vikings down one nothing. The one two pitch, just off the outside corner, and it's two and two. Two two pitch, and a swing and a miss, and White. Strikes out, and that ends the inning. No runs a hit. Runner caught stealing, and no runners left on after two innings of play. Vikings trail the Mustangs one to nothing. Top of the order for the Mustangs in the top of the third, and the first one bounced in there for ball one. Jacob Gallegos leading things off. Gallegos, Roth, and Journey for Ralston Valley in the third. And the 1-0 pitch. On the inside corner, a strike. It's 1-1. One one. And that ball hit down the right field line, and that's down for a base hit. So a leadoff single for Gallegos. He got on to start the ball game with a walk, got around to third base before being stranded there in the first. Yeah, Connor Roth, the shortstop for the Mustangs. And with Ralston Valley already up one nothing. Figure their bunny here. As an easy throw goes to first. St. Lawrence trying to see if Roth will give up his intent. Right hand didn't slide up the barrel of the bat, though, and didn't uh, there either. It's again, the throw over, and again, the runner back. Now the bunt shown, and the pitch over for a strike. 
Roth struck out in the first inning. Now being asked to move that runner into scoring position. Throw to first. Runner back standing this time. Uh, they take the bunt off and uh, swinging away Roth. Singles sharply into left field. Swing and a miss for a strike. I got. Uh, I wrote down David. That's what uh, they're going with in the PA, but it's uh, Daniel Journey. And the one strike pitch. And he'll lay down a nice bunt. Kornacker picks it up. He'll step and throw to first base. And it's in time, but Journey... Gets the job done as he moves the runners up a base apiece. A 1-3 sacrifice for the first down of the inning. And now two in scoring position for Jacob Nett. Now Jacob Nepp at the plate, and he takes a strike. And that ball fouled out of play. And so Kornacker jumps ahead of Nepp. No balls and two strikes. Fastball up and in for a ball, one and two. Second and third with one out, top of the third inning. And Ralston Valley leading one to nothing. In a position to add to it here. And that ball bounced in, that's going to get away, and that'll bring in another run. Eric wasn't able to smother it, the ball kicks. Over toward the third base dugout on the wild pitch. Brings in a second run for the Mustangs. They go up 2-0 in the third. Still work to be done here for Ralston Valley and Jacob Nip up there with a 2-2 camp, but that runner at third base. And a fastball on the inside part of the plate. Nip not able to pull the trigger, not quite able to hold the swing. And so he is out on strikes. And there's two away in the inning for Jordan Holloway. And the first one to Holloway outside for ball one. And a 1 0 pitch. It's foul to the backstop, and it's one and one. Now four days of baseball here at Cherry Field, running two fields for uh, almost uh, well one one field run in five games a day, and the other one four. At least that was the first couple of days. A little less baseball yesterday, as they had the team banquet last night. And then the placement games today as each team played once. There's a ground ball out to second. And that's Dahl. He throws high. But Wilson able to come down with it and apply the tag as Holloway was running by. And so a 4-3 ground out will end 
the inning. Ralston Valley gets another run in the third, though. They get a run on two hits, and they leave one after two and a half. It's the Mustangs two, and the Vikings nothing. Eight, nine, and one in the order for the Vikings in the bottom of the third. And third baseman Frank Greco leads off and takes low for ball one. Pitch is low and it's 2 0. The wind and the 2 0 pitch. And that's out of play. The 2 1. That skipped in there. Three balls and a strike. And that one fouled away, and the count runs full. to straightaway center field. And Guy goes there for the first down of the Viking third. Now Robert Gutierrez, the left fielder. And he pops one up. Foul and strike one on Gutierrez. As you can tell, we lose a little bit of visibility as we get down the right field line. Now the one strike pitch. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball, and it's 0 and 2. Pitch high, one ball and two strikes. And the breaking ball didn't miss by much, but a ball, and it's two and two. Robinson back to it, and it misses low, three and two. Robinson back to it at a 3 2 pitch. And that's bounced in, and it's ball four. And Gutierrez is going to try for second base, and no throw. So it's ball four. Gutierrez gets all the way to second base, got away, and then the catcher journey got tangled up with a plate umpire, couldn't find the ball on the backstop. And it turned out that it was Robinson, the pitcher, that actually got to it. Bats for the second time after walking in the bottom of the first. He's up there with a runner at second and one out. And the next one outside for a ball, and it's one and one. The 
set on the check of the runner at second. And the 1-1. And that's fouled out of play. And it's a ball and two strikes. One on one out, bottom of the third. Vikings trailing two to nothing. Fastball high, and it's two and two. The look back to second, the 2 2 pitch. That's going to bounce in. And the runner will go to third base. Count runs full, and the runner to third base on the wild pitch. Well, the umpires are going to come together here as Gutierrez went uh, over toward third and started to go around third. He made contact with Carlson, and so the question from the uh, third base coach's box and uh, Pete Lotus, the head coach for St. Lawrence, was if there was contact to warrant sending Gutierrez plateward. Umpires say no, and so he remains at third base. And a 3-2. And that's hit pretty well out to left field. That's going to get uh, over the head and over the fence. A two-run home run off the bat of Brad Wood. And St. Lawrence has tied it in the bottom of the third. Two-run home run for Brad Wood, and now we'll get timeout from the Ralston Valley dugout. And Nate Thal going after the first one. He hits it well on down the left field line. That's going to get just about to the fence and he'll pull in at second base with a double. the pitcher. The first pitch, breaking ball near the outside corner, a strike. Fly ball, that's hit well out to center field. Guy goes on the run. And they're going to go back to second base. Now the uh, base umpire looked like he signaled safe and then out. And they are able to double up the runner at second base. That's a whale of a play from the center fielder, Gallegos, as he takes away extra bases on the catch. And then Thole was all the way to third base. He had to try to get back to second and could not do it. And the double play will end the inning. But St. Lawrence comes back to tie with two runs in the bottom of the third on two hits. And after three innings of play, we're tied at two. Underway in the top of the fourth inning, and Mitch Robinson takes the first pitch outside for a ball. And the next one over for a strike. Robinson, DeVore, and Squire 
scheduled a bat in the fourth. And the next one at the knees, a strike, and it's one and two. 2-2 two -two ball game, top of the fourth. Championship game of the Chris Moon Memorial Cherry Field Classic. And that's a fly ball out to right field. Miller has to drift just a bit to his left and makes the catch, one away. Now John DeVore, who struck out swinging in the second inning. Going after the first one here in the fourth and fouls it out of play. And a ground ball to short. Wood fields and throws low, but picked out at first base by Wilson. And there's two away. Second baseman, Caleb Squire. Now Caleb Squire, the second baseman. And a swing and a miss for a strike. The one and the 0 1. And a swing and a miss. It's nothing in two. Back to the wind, a two-strike pitch. And misses for a ball. Merrick started toward his dugout. Squire started toward his. But the only opinion that matters, I guess, the plate umpire, and he said ball one. Now the one-two pitch. And a swing and a miss. And it's a three-up, three-down Ralston Valley fourth inning. Midpoint of the ball game, we're tied at two. Middle third of the order for the Vikings in the fourth. And Mike Miller takes outside for ball one. And a ground ball out to second. Squire has it on to first base in time. And the leadoff hitter retired in the bottom of the fourth. And TJ Merrick, the catcher, he had a base hit in the second. Swing and a miss out in front of a breaking ball. Pitch outside for a ball, one and one. And another one misses away. And it's two and one. Pitch over for a strike, and it's two and two. The ball fouled out of play down the right side. We stay two balls, two strikes. One out base is empty, bottom of inning number four, and it's a 2 2 ball game. Ball that's bounced in three and two. And that 
ball through and into left field, a base hit. So Merrick two for two. And that'll bring up Roger Wilson. Fastball to Wilson is high for a ball. ball. Looked like that was going to be trouble there and it turns into trouble for Ralston Valley as the shortstop Roth isn't able to pick it up clean and then as the throw goes to third base they give up a second one as the hitter Wilson moves into scoring position. So there should be two errors on the play. One on the ground ball that again coming off the bat looked like it was a potential double play ball. And now Kevin White bats with a couple runners in scoring position. The infield comes in. And a ground ball. That's up the middle into center field. A base hit. One run will score. Wilson is waved around. He scores. And it's a two-run single off the bat of Kevin White. And St. Lawrence leads 4-2. to two. And time called from the Mustang dugout. Now Frank Greco for the Vikings and a swing and a miss for a strike. Pitch inside, and now a runner going on a delay, and he's going to get there. So White took off, got about halfway and stopped, and that caused Journey the catcher to pause. White got it going again and got it into second base. Now fly ball into right field. That's put away for the second out of the inning as Griffith retires Greco. Two away in the inning for the number nine hitter Robert Gutierrez as St. Lawrence has scored twice in the bottom of the fourth inning and they lead Ralston Valley 4-2. It's the championship game of the 2014 Chris Moon Memorial Cherry Field Classic from Tucson. Gutierrez lays off the first pitch, but it's over for a strike. Now the look back to second base and the 0-1. Near the inside corner, a called strike, and it's 0-2. Two pitch way off the plate for a ball, trying to get Gutierrez to chase, but he did not. And the count one and two. And if Gutierrez can reach, Brad Wood would bat here in the fourth. Of course, Wood had the two run home run back in the third. That ball bounces in, and that'll get a runner over to third base. So a count of two balls and two strikes.
And a ground ball, and that's through and into left field, a base hit. Gutierrez drives in a run. And it's five to two. mentioned Wood, who had a uh, walk in the first and then the two-run home run in the third. First pitch is high for ball one. Ball down the left field line. It's going to be trouble if it's fair, and it is down for a base hit. Throw will go. Well, it's going to be cut off. It was headed for third base, but uh, sliding in was Gutierrez, and Woods at second base with a double. And time called from the Ralston Valley dugout, and that's going to be it for their starter, Mitch Robinson. We play in the bottom of the fourth inning, and St. Lawrence now leads Ralston Valley 5-2. to two. Nate Thal going after the first pitch and fouls it out of play. A pitcher in there for Ralston Valley is Connor Roth. He comes in from shortstop. Robinson takes his spot. The shortstop position and now breaking ball over for a strike and it's 0-2. Pitch misses for a ball, one and two the count. And the 1-2 pitch. That's outside. And it's 2-2. Two and two. two in scoring position, two outs for the Vikings in the bottom of the fourth. They have scored three times to break a 2-2 tie. And the 2-2 pitch is outside, 3-2. Chopper over the mound. Robinson will charge. He throws high and throws it away. And that's going to bring in a couple of more runs. Gutierrez and Wood score on an E6. And it's 7 to 2. Pitcher Mike Cornacker. Now Mike Kornacker bats with the runner at first and two away. First pitch misses. For a ball to Kornacker. He had a fly out to right field in the first and a fly out to center field to end the third. Takes outside for a ball, 2-0. And the 2-0 pitch. That's outside, 3-0. and Roth with a set and the 3-0 pitch. And that's low ball four. First, as the courtesy runner for Kornacker. And the batter will be Mike Miller, but first a timeout. Yeah, Miller with 
with a swing and a miss for a strike. The 0 1. And that's hit into left field, playable out there. And that's caught. And that'll end the inning. Ten come to the plate for the Vikings in the fourth inning, though. And they score five times after four. They lead seven to two. Nine, one, and two in the order for the Mustangs as Jake Griffith takes strike one. Griffith grounded out back in the second. And the next pitch low, and it's one and one. Jacob Gallegos, Connor Roth to follow for Ralston Valley in the fifth. The 1-1 one, one pitch. All right, that looked pretty good. Call the ball, 2-1. and one. Now then that one called a strike, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Into the 2 2. Inside, just about got him. 3 and 2. Into the wind and a 3 2 pitch. And a called third strike. That's a seventh strikeout now for Kornacker. He had two in the first, two in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth, and now one in the fifth. Seven strikeouts through four and a third. Three hits allowed, two runs, one earned. And now facing the leadoff hitter for the third time, Jacob Gallegos, and he takes high for ball one. Foul back out of play. And the count one and one. The one one pitch. And a ground ball backhanded behind the bag at third by Greco and the throw to first base. And safe the call. That was a great effort on both sides. Greco makes the backhand stop off the dive, and Wilson with a stretch to pick out the throw. But Diegos gets down the line to beat it out. So an infield single. And the batter is Connor Roth. First one to Roth outside for a ball. And the next one on the inside corner at the knees, a strike, it's one and one. And Gallegos over there at first has been on base all three times, a walk and two hits. Roth a strikeout and a walk in his two at-bats. And he gets hit by the pitch, just barely clipped him there, but it was enough to send him to first base and push Gallegos to second. And now the Mustangs will try to make something happen here in the top of the fifth inning, trailing seven to two. <laughs> Dalton Fribble out to run again. Two aboard with one out, top of the fifth inning. And the Mustangs down seven to two. And the first pitch over for a strike. Now 
swing and a miss, and it's 0-2. Check the runner at second, the 0-2. And he had a swing and a miss. Pitch up out of the strike zone there, and then that ball thrown behind the runner. That one just about hit Journey, coming uh, back up the middle from the catcher, Merrick. First baseman, Jacob Nip. And Jacob Nip, the first baseman with two aboard and now two out in the inning. First pitch to Nip is low for ball one. Swing and a miss, and it's one and one. The one one pitch hit back up the middle, and uh, now the reaction there from Kornacker. He thought that was going to be a screamer back at him, and it uh, almost kind of came back as a changeup, but he was able to stay with it, made a nice defensive play. And it ends the inning. No runs, one hit. One hit batter and two runners left through four and a half. Ralston Valley still trails St. Lawrence seven to two. TJ Merrick, the leadoff hitter in the fifth inning for St. Lawrence. Takes strike one. And the next pitch outside, one and one. Merrick, Wilson, and White scheduled for St. Lawrence in the fifth. The 1-1 pitch. That's up and in. Two balls and a strike. And a pitch fouled off. It's 2-2. Two and two. Merrick, 2 for 2. Singled in the second. And singled in the fourth. Pitch high, and it's three and two. Had a courtesy runner out there both times. First time, the runner was caught stealing. That was in the second inning, but then in the fourth, courtesy runner came all the way around to score a run. Three-two pitch, and a line shot into center field, but drifting over is Gallegos, and he puts it away. And there's one gun in the fifth. First baseman, Roger, yeah, Wilson. Roger Wilson, who's 0 for 2. Hit a fly ball to right field in the second, and he reached on an error and scored in the fourth. And he takes low for a ball. And the 1-0. Just above the belt for a strike. It's 1-1. One one. Inside, just about got Wilson, two and one. Bases empty, one out, bottom of the fifth, seven to two, St. Lawrence. And the two one. That's a ground ball over to third, grabbed there, and a throw to first base. He is in time. Carlson throws out Wilson. And there's two away for Kevin White. Center fielder, Kevin White. First pitch high for a ball. And now a swing and a miss, and it's one and one. Nice breaking ball over for a strike. It's one and two. And that's over a calm third strike, and it is a quick and quiet three up, three down, bottom of the fifth inning for the Vikings. We move to the sixth. 
St. Lawrence still leads Ralston Valley 7-2. Five, six, and seven in the order for the Wellston Valley Mustangs in the top of the sixth. The first one to Jordan Holloway, low for a ball. And the next pitch low, two and oh. The two oh pitch. And a soft line drive, and that's Scott. Good uh, lateral movement there from the shortstop Wood. And kept that ball from getting on the ground. Catches the line drive and the first down recorded in the top of the sixth. And now the batter is Mitch Robinson. First off, Mitch Robinson. First one over on the third base side. Pulled foul, strike one. Robinson with a single in the second and a fly out to right field in the fourth. Austin Valley got on the scoreboard first, an unearned run in the second inning as it pitches fouled back. They added an earned run in the third and led 2-0 going into the bottom of the third inning. St. Lawrence got even on a two-run home run from Brad Wood. And we were tied at two after three innings of play. It's fouled out of play. And then in the bottom of the fourth inning, the Vikings able to open it up. They scored five runs on four hits and three Ralston Valley errors. Led 7-2 to after 4, and that's where we're at playing in the top of the 6th. Breaking ball bounces in there, and it's 1-2. One, and two. one out base is empty in the top of the 6th inning. And the pitch a little bit low for a ball, 2-2. Two and two. Two, two. Uh, and that hits Robinson, and he goes to first base. Now John DeVore looking for his first base hit, a strikeout in the second, a ground out in the fourth. Takes outside for ball one. The 1 0 pitch. Over the outer half of the plate, a strike, and it's 1 and 1. Throw to first, and the runner back. And the 1-1 one, one pitch popped up. And uh, well, it was playable over there, but a foul ball. I didn't see it come off the bat. Trying to find it there. Wood, or Greco rather, was tracking it, but he got to about a step away from the fence and couldn't haul it in. And the count goes to 1-2. and two. Kornacker with the look in for the sign, and he steps off. And that one just off the outside corner, two balls and two strikes. That's bounced in. Runner's going to try for a second, and the throw down is not in time. So a wild pitch will take Ralston Valley out of a double play probability, or possibility rather, as uh, the count runs full. Have a look back in the 3-2 pitch. And that's through and into left field for a base hit. And then the ball misplayed in left field by Gutierrez. And that's going to bring one run in 
And DeVore hustling to third base. He'll stop there. And Ralston Valley gets one in the top of the sixth inning. Give DeVore credit for a single. But then an E7 will score Robinson and move DeVore all the way around to third. A run in for Ralston Valley makes it 7-3, to three, and we get a St. Lawrence timeout. Pinch hitter for Ralston Valley as Reed Hutchin bats for Caleb Squire. Take the first pitch for a ball. The next one over for a strike, and it's one and one. And the next pitch, a fastball inside, two and one. Didn't miss by much. Call the ball three and one. And that ball rolled foul outside of third, and the count's full at three and two. for ball four. So the Mustangs making some noise here in the sixth inning. Two aboard with one out and a run in. And another pinch hitter is Dalton Pribble will bat in place of Jake Griffith. So we're going to get uh, a re-entry as Caleb Squire is back in to run at first. Seven to three, our score top of the sixth inning. Tying run in the on-deck circle for Ralston Valley, batting with one out. And the first pitch over for a strike. And that pitch is up and in, and that one hits Pribble. And so that will load the bases, and the tying run will come to the plate for the Mustangs in the sixth inning, and that's going to be it for Cornacker. We play in the top of the sixth, Ralston Valley down 7-3. to three. Yeah, Pitching change here in the sixth as Jacob Gallegos faces the new St. Lawrence pitcher. It's John Reardon. Pitch misses low, and it's one and one. Bases loaded, one out, a run in for Ralston Valley in the top of the sixth inning. They trail seven to three. And a ground ball, and that takes a bounce there and gets past and into left field, a base hit. And so a run in to make it seven to four. Now the tying run at first base, and the go-ahead run at the plate. Connor Roth will get a chance with the bases loaded and one out. And a swing and a miss. Strike one. Pitch high, one and one. Two runs are crossed for the Mustangs at the top of the sixth inning. An opportunity to get even with the bases loaded and one out. Down by three. The one-one pitch. And that ball hits into left field and a foul ball. Now 
the set and the one-two pitch. And a swing and a miss on a breaking ball. And Roth is out number two. And Daniel Journey. First one fouled away. Now the set and the one strike pitch. Outside for a ball, one and one. Squire at third, Pribble at second, Gallegos at first. Ridden the relief pitcher with a 1 1 pitch. It's near the inside corner. Journey with a look back at the plate umpire. He thought it was inside and off the plate. And the 1 2. And a breaking ball. That one just misses. Two balls and two strikes. Shaking off his sign, now has the one he wants. Here's the set and the 2-2 pitch. And that's fouled out of play. You know, with the bases loaded in this situation, you sure want to get it done on a 2-2 pitch. You don't want to go to 3-2 because then the runners can get going. The 2-2. And a slow ground ball. And contact. And the runner is going to be called out as Gallegos runs into the second baseman, Thole. The head coach for Ralston Valley, Shane Freeling, out to talk to his, to the base umpire. And obviously that's a big call because Thole did not come up with the ball clean on the ground ball. It would have been a loose ball and it would have scored at least one. And the play will stand as called, and now Freeling has been ejected. So he's been ejected from the ball game, and uh, Ralston Valley turned away. They do get uh, on the board and get a little closer. They scored twice in the top of the sixth inning, and after five and a half, they trail seven to four. Yeah, we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Eight, nine, and one in the order for the Vikings. And Greco hit by a pitch, and he will go to first base to begin the inning for St. Lawrence. We're going to get a runner at first base. I believe Sean Burnett's going to come out and run. Yeah, and it is Burnett that goes out to run at first base for the Vikings. They lead 7 to 4 in the top of this, the uh, bottom rather of the sixth inning, and we'll see with the number nine hitter up if they're going to try to play for a single run. Uh, Gutierrez up there. Robert with the walk and a run in the third inning. An RBI single and a run scored in the fourth. Obviously a controversial play to end the top of the sixth inning. And Gutierrez takes ball one. But a controversial play with Gallegos running on a slow ground ball hit toward the second baseman, Thal. Contact was made, and the base umpire immediately signaled that Gallegos was out. And now Gutierrez lays down a nice bunt. It's picked up, but the throw to first base is in time, but the sacrifice moves the runner into scoring position at second. 2-3 on the sacrifice of Gutierrez. Oh. 
Now Brad Wood with the runner at second and one away. And the first pitch outside for ball one. And Wood fouls that one off wide of third base. Count goes to a ball and a strike. Second in the pitch and a slow ground ball fielded by Squire on to first base. And that's out number two. Greco gets to third on the play. Now it'll be up to Nate Fall to try to bring him in. And the first one over for a strike. And we look to the Ralston Valley seventh inning. They'll send up four, five, and six in the order. And there's a swing and a miss, a strike, and it's 0-2. Pitch outside, one ball, two strikes. Into the line of the one two. And that's behind and hits Thal. And he goes to first base on a hit batter or a hit by pitch. And Mike Kornacker. Kornacker with a chance to hit here. Two runners on with two outs in the bottom of the sixth. And the first pitch high for a ball. St. Lawrence leads 7-4, hitting in the bottom of the sixth. The 1-0 pitch. And that ball hits uh, into left field. And uh, ruled a catch by the base umpire. And a catch from DeVore takes a hit away and runs away from St. Lawrence. And uh, that will do it then in the sixth inning for the Vikings. No runs, no hits, two hit batters, two runners left. And we head to the seventh, 7-4. Seven to four. Vikings. Middle third of the order for Ralston Valley in the top of the seventh inning as Jacob Nip leads off. And he faces a new pitcher as he takes a strike on the outside corner. Roger Wilson comes on to throw the seventh to try to finish it up here for St. Lawrence. Next pitch high, and it's one and one. Rich Lamb enters the ball game at first base to take Wilson's spot defensively for the Vikings. And a fly ball into center field. And that's playable out there and put away for out number one. Jordan Holloway. First pitch high for a ball. And the next one over for a strike, and it's one and one. Holloway lined down to the shortstop. What is last time up? 0 for 2 with a walk and a run today. 
And there's a ground ball, and that's through. And into center field, a base hit. A couple of steps out of the reach of Thull, and so Holloway with his first hit aboard for the second time. And the batter, Mitch Robinson. Robinson one for two. He's also been hit by a pitch. And a ball bounced in. It goes to the backstop and all the way to second on a wild pitch. It's a ground ball. Greco has it. Steps and throws to first base. And that's in time. And that's out number two. The fielder, John DeVore. Now John DeVore representing the final out. Final chance here for the Mustangs in the seventh as he takes the first one high for a ball. And the next pitch over for a strike, and it's one and one. And the pitch over for a strike, and it's one and two. DeVore one for three, had a base hit his last time up. Trying to keep the inning alive and get the tying run to the plate in the seventh. Runner at second and two outs. Mustangs down by three. The set and the one two. And a pop up, should do it. Over on the right side, Thal, the second baseman there. He's got it. And the St. Lawrence Vikings are the champions in the 2014 Christmas Memorial Cherry Field Classic. No runs, a hit, and one left in the seventh. And we go final, seven to four. The final in this one. Totals on the ball game for Ralston Valley. Four runs, seven hits, three errors, and nine left. For St. Lawrence, seven runs, seven hits, one error, and five runners left on base. So that will do it as St. Lawrence comes to Tucson from uh, Illinois and takes home the first place trophy and we'll have that trophy presentation for you here momentarily it will be uh, without uh, the audio part at least the play by play part so we'll wrap up that now and then we'll bring you the uh, video presentation of the trophy that's coming up here uh, momentarily but uh, again we'll wrap up the audio portion and uh, remind you again the final score St. Lawrence 7 and Ralston Valley 4 thanks to Tucson head coach Oscar Romero for giving us the opportunity our second year in a row to come down and cover this uh, great tournament and uh, spend a week down here or several days anyway down here in Tucson covering good high school baseball so we uh, had a good time we hope to be back again next year so that'll do it again 7 of 4 St. Lawrence over Ralston Valley from Cherry Field in Tucson, Arizona. Todd Garbison for Southwest Sports Network saying so long and congratulations again to the St. Lawrence Vikings, the champions in the 2014 Chris Moon Memorial Cherry Field Classic. Direct your attention to the area directly behind home plate. We have Chris Moon's 4th Brigade Combat Team, 508 Parachute Infantry Regiment emblem painted on the grass. And there stands head Tucson High Baseball Coach Oscar Romero along with Chris Moon's Gold Star Mother, Marcia Moon. Standing uh, final here to have uh, two quality teams uh, showed up to play a good ball game. And uh, I can't say about enough of both of the coaching staffs. You can tell that these guys are well prepared to come out here and battle and to uh, do their best. And uh, I want to first obviously take our hats off for Ralston Valley for an outstanding tournament. All the group of players, coaching staff, and uh, lots of talent, I'm telling you, on that side of the field there. And, uh, 
Coach Kemp a little short today, but I know you're proud of your guys, how they came out and performed this year <coughs> out in the Chris Moon Tournament. And uh, like I said before, we love having Ralston Valley here. And uh, their fans travel well. Thank you, fans, for supporting your boys and coming here to Tucson, Arizona. And uh, Coach, we want to present you and your, your group here with the 2014 runner-up trophy for Mrs. Moon. And for this year's group, tell you what, uh, exciting group of guys right here. Uh, I guess they travel a little bit large, to say the least here. And uh, they came a long way from Illinois, just a little bit further than Colorado. And uh, uh, we're excited about that opportunity, Coach, that you guys brought down. Uh, it was excellent watching the, the system that you run. Uh, we've never seen that. Uh, I'm not going to incorporate whistles in my program here. But uh, I tell you what, they're doing it right because uh, the guys came out to play well. and. Uh, a lot of quality athletes on this side of the field too, and obviously today, uh, your guys proved uh, that they were worthy of this Trev Chip Trophy from Mrs. Moon, who will present you the first place trophy. Congratulations, Pete Lotus, on your good year. <laughs> so, each of your players, if you would, uh, start the lineup, on, and then uh, we've got some medals. Mrs. Moon, we'll go ahead and put a medal over the, the players over your heads for a championship here at the 2014 Chris Moon Memorial Tournament.